Hi guys, it's Claire. Um, I'm thrilled to be back doing another layout for the UK Scrap Addicts design team. Um, this month's theme or challenge is mixed media, which I'm chuffed about because I actually really enjoy doing mixed media on my layouts. So you'll know that if you've watched any of my process videos before that that's something that I like to have a go at anyway. I'm not sure that I'm that good at it, but I definitely enjoy doing it. Um, yeah, so this one wasn't too much of a challenge for me. The photos that I'm going to be using for today's layout are these little photos that I took of my nephew Dylan just the other day. We were out, um, the sun had come out, we've had a period of bad weather here in, in the south of England. It's been raining a hell of a lot, so it was really nice the other day that the sun came out, we could go for a little walk around a local village and then just, just play about in the sunshine. So I snapped away with the camera, Dylan, my little nephew, was running down this path, rickety old path towards me, and I was just playing with the camera, taking photos of him. So they're nothing special, we're not recording a super special moment here, just having some fun in the sun really. So I've printed them out as little, um, I think these are two and a half inches square and you can see you saw me there trim them all down leaving a little white border on the edge and I then you got a Polaroid frame, this is a lawn fawn die that cuts out this Polaroid frame and I cut one of those to put in my central photo and now I'm piling pieces of paper behind. These are just scraps of paper from my scrap box. They're not anything specific. It's literally just scrap pieces that we keep. We cut down to six by six and we keep them in a basket and use them when we need to. The, so I've pulled out this yellow and the light blue turquoisey color colors here that I like and I've piled them up behind the photo. No real rhyme or reason for this, just piling them up so that I can see a bit of every single color. And now I'm sticking those all together so that I can move the whole photo piece as, as one piece rather than separate pieces. So there you go, I'm just checking that I'm happy with the size of that. And popping some more adhesive in there. I'm using my Scotch ATG gun as usual. I love this, I couldn't scrapbook without it. It's one of the sort of essential tools that you have to have in your craft room. And I'm now distressing the edges of all those pieces of paper, just going around it with a little distress tool. Not too perfectly, but just adding some texture. There we go. And then I'm going to stick my photos on the top. First of all, I'm going to stick that Polaroid frame to that photo. So again, using my scotch just to get that stuck down. I actually add a little bit of washi tape as well. Um, I think I do it off camera, I'm not sure that you see me, but here you go, it's got a little bit of washi tape on the back there to hold the photo to the Polaroid. Now I'm using some old cardboard to pop that up, so instead of using foam adhesive or foam sheets, I'm just recycling some, some cardboard, some packaging that I had, which is something that we all should do, instead of buying going, going out and buying plastic foam, we should actually recycle what we've got, so I'm trying to be very good at using bits of cardboard. There we go, distressing around the edges as well of everything and I'm going to pop some cardboard in the middle of that one. It doesn't need it all over because obviously the sides are sitting on the other two photos. But there you go, I'm going to pop some strips of cardboard just in the middle. So now my whole photo piece or photo cluster is one thing which makes it a lot easier to move around and decide where I, where I want everything. Okay, now the next thing that I'm going to do is pull in this piece of black and white striped paper. And I know that I want to have this peeking out from the edge of my layout somewhere. I'm not sure, I, as you see, I can't decide here if I want it on the left hand side or if I want to have it at the top, I'm not sure, but I know that I want it there. I trim a piece off of my white cardstock and distress the edge. As you can see, I left that deliberately not straight. I literally just used my scissors to, to chop up the end and, and, let, and cut a wonky line. And I'm now sticking that down onto my stripe using the piece that I cut off as a guide to know that it's going to go back and be an exact 12 by 12 still. And I've popped that on and I actually turn it around and I decide that I like it on the right hand side better so that's where it stays. 
now we're going to get onto the inky mixed media stuff. So I've pulled some inks from my collection that match the pattern papers that I've used there. So we've got Distress inks in, I think we've got Squeeze Lemonade, Fossilised Amber, I think it's Stormy Sky and Broken China. I'm not 100% sure. I'll link them down below anyway. But basically I've got two yellows, a light and a dark, and then two blues, a light and a dark. And I'm do using the packaging technique here to put some colour on my background. So I'm just squidging my ink pad down onto my piece of plastic. Again, recycled packaging. Um, spritzing it with some water from my little Tim Holtz Distress distress water sprayer and as you can see just pouncing that onto my card I haven't put any gesso or primer or anything down beforehand I'm just putting the ink straight onto the page or straight onto the layout so just pouncing down the color dabbing some up there as you can see and then going in with a slightly darker shade just getting that sort of watery messy inky looking background it, um, done there and I'm going to heat set it a little bit I'm going to go in with the blue but I want to dry off the yellow before I put any blue on so that it doesn't turn to the, a sort of green colour I want to keep it yellow and blue so now doing the exact same thing all over again but with the blues so going in the, with the lighter one here which is tumbled glass I can see now it says tumbled glass and the darker one is broken china um, so in with the lighter one getting some colours there a little bit more and I decided to do some splatters as well so I'm using a little fan brush that I bought same thing just dab some tumbled glass ink down onto the the plastic spray with water and I go in with broken china there as well it needs to be darker pick up some color and spray it or I'll tap the brush to get some flicks all over your background and I just keep going until I'm happy with what with what I've got there now with mixed media you do have to be really really brave and just give it a go it's not there's no right or wrong way of doing it and there's no real technique it's just just play just get some color on your layout and enjoy what you're doing um and experiment you know you might end up liking what you do it really is worth just giving it a go so that's it for my inking again a quick little blast with the heat tool just to, to dry that off and then i'm going to stick my photos into position so again, I think I'm just going to, oh, hold, before we do that, I'm going to decide what embellishments I want. So I'm pulling out this old chipboard set. This is something I've had for absolutely ages. It's from the poolside collection. I bought it when we were in America on a craft retreat. Um, and I want to use this word summer and it's got the perfect colours. So it works really well with my background. You've got that yellow and that light blue turquoisey colour and it works really, really well. I have a play with placement. I can't decide if I want it to go on the Polaroid frame or off of it, but I do decide to put it on. And again, flicking through some older chipboard embellishments. These are from the Atlas collection. I want to use this little explore. Um, this is a darker blue than everything else on the layout and it actually doesn't end up staying. It's there for a minute, but right at the very end you'll see in my finished photos that I've taken that off and, and changed it around. The pop of that bright blue just wasn't, wasn't working for me, so I changed it. So there you go, I've stuck those on. Now I'm going to do um, a little bit more to the background. I decide that I want to add some black on the background, which will pull in with that black and white stripe that I've got at the side. So I've grabbed some Tim Holtz stamps, just a selection of stamps. I just want texture and grunge in the background. I'm not particularly overthinking this. I just know that I want to get some black stamping done. So I've done a little test one there in the middle to make sure I'm happy with it. And then I just spend a little bit of time stamping around, changing up the stamp. As I say, not overthinking the position, but just getting some black stamping behind my photo. I'm using black VersaFine ink, which works perfectly on top of these distress inks that I've done. We go switch into another stamp now. These don't have to be Tim Holtz stamps. You can use any stamps that you've got. Just some some sort of distressy background type stamps is all you need. You can even be brave and doodle these on and draw them yourself, but but I'm not that brave. There we go. So. Just add in more, again, just until I'm happy with it. I'm just going to keep stamping away until I like how much I've got there. One of the little sets uh, has this little star in there, which I quite like as well. So I pop a few of those around. There we go. And just literally just keep stamping until you're happy. As 
as I say, that explore sticker or explore chipboard piece on the side there won't end up staying. I'm liking it for now, and I do like the circle, but I just the blue colour just isn't quite right, so I end up taking that away because it bugs me at the end. And this was a great layout for using up just scraps of things. I didn't use any major collection here or any full set. It was little bits of odd papers that I had, little odd chipboard embellishments I had, and then just ink. That's all there is to it. So it's a really great layout just for using up things. Really, really enjoyed this one. Okay, so I've got one last stamp that I'm doing, which is a sort of distressed st circle with a star in the middle. And I'm popping that around as well, just randomly. Okay, very lastly, I want to add some black ink splatters. So again, using my little fan brush, and I'm dipping in it in my pot of Windsor & Newton black um, Indian ink. So this is just a, a liquid black ink. So I'm splattering around, making a bit of a mess on my background, but that all wipes up. Now I go ahead and stick my photos in onto the middle or onto the middle of the layout. So Scotch adhesive again, which works absolutely fine. And I use my T-square ruler just to make sure that that's perfectly square at the bottom. And stick that down. And then very lastly, all I'm going to do is add the date. So this is just a roller date stamp using the same black Versa marking again. And just pop the date down at the bottom and it sits nicely just, just below the title. Next to that star there. There you go, and that is it. That's my layout done. As you'll see, as I said, from the, the photos you'll see coming up, I did change it a bit, and I took away that Explore sticker and added in a couple of other yellow stickers that I that I found. I put that shine on at the top, and it's going to be a bright, sunshiny day at the bottom, along with some little blue heart stickers that I found as well. I just carried on rummaging through my stash and, and finding anything that had the colours that I liked. So, yeah, changed it up a tiny bit at the end, but still loved doing that mixed media background. Really Really, really, really good layout to do thoroughly enjoyed it i hope it inspires you a little bit i hope you give it a go um yeah and as always thank you very very much for watching take care guys bye